please? See the storage facility, Mr. Pick. Hey, ghost heads. It's Heidi from Channeling Spirits. We're on part three of our series exploring the history and physics behind the Ghostbusters equipment. We will continue to build on the science of our previous videos, so if you haven't seen them, be sure to check them out. We've talked about the proton packs wrangling ghosts, the traps catching them, and now we want to talk about how the Ghostbusters hold them indefinitely. This is done with the containment unit. While we might be familiar with the name, the original film actually calls it Ecto containment system. Storage facility. Storage facility. Storage facility. Storage facility. Storage facility. Storage facility. Containment system. Storage facility. It wouldn't get the name containment unit until the real Ghostbusters in 1986. Welcome to our 220 volt 10 megawatt ecto containment unit. Like the proton packs and ghost traps, the containment unit dates back to Dan Aykroyd's original treatment of ghost smashers. According to Don Shea's book, Making Ghostbusters, in Dan Aykroyd's first script, the spectral storage facility was not at the firehouse itself, but rather in a deserted Sunoco gas station in northern New Jersey, taken over by the Ghostbusters and surreptitiously converted into a holding cell for wayward spirits. By the August 5, 1983 draft, the storage facility was relocated to the basement of the fire hall. One half of the room has been sealed off from floor to ceiling with concrete cinder blocks. At mid-level, there is a row of thin metal-lined slits. Venkman and Stance approach this wall and insert the trap into a slit. In this early draft, it also included an ultimately deleted concept of having a video monitor showing the inside of the containment unit. In Making Ghostbusters, associate producer Michael Gross explained why the scene never made it to the film. It would have been a great shot. The inside of a storage facility was conceived as sort of a drunk tank holding cell for lost souls. There would have been hundreds of disgruntled and miserable ghosts sitting around on benches. Bankman says, I can't look anymore, it's too depressing. And we started to think that the audience might feel the same way. Again, we didn't want the audience to feel sorry for the ghosts. Another consideration was this would have been a major effect sequence, requiring the generation of hundreds of supernatural creatures. We just didn't have enough time left, so the shot had to go. Despite it being deleted from the film, the video monitor would appear in other Ghostbusters media. In the novelization, Ghostbusters the Supernatural Spectacular by Richard Mueller, he explains, Winston Zeddemore was absolutely fascinated as he stood peering through the view slit. It was a damned prison, he thought, a prison for ghosts. Inside, the various multicolored spirits, wisps of color and light, swirled about aimlessly or slouched in despair against the walls. Occasionally, one would drip up to the viewpoint and stare back like a grouper in an aquarium. The real Ghostbusters would use this concept. This I gotta see. Well, what's happened? I bet he's fuming and raging like the rest of them. See for yourself. As would Ghostbusters the video game. He's been fascinated with it ever since you added the viewer to the unit. By the September 30th, 1983 draft, there would be minor changes to the description of the containment unit. It's still described as a viewing slit, but only had one metal lined slot in the wall where the trap would be inserted. This would remain unchanged in all subsequent drafts. The final film would describe it as a custom-made storage facility and a high-voltage laser containment system. And while Egon theorized their system could hold a ghost indefinitely, their initial facility only had a finite amount of room to store the entities. I'm worried, Ray. It's getting crowded in there, and all my recent data points to something big on the horizon. And it was also dependent on the city's power grid, with no redundancy installed in the event of a power failure 
or manual shutoff. When a condensed amount of PKE was released from the containment unit, it caused substantial destruction to the firehouse. The real Ghostbusters expanded the unit. The second order of business is to rebuild the containment grid so we'll have some place to put the ghosts. Which led to the new unit stretching two stories down in the basement. Ghostbusters 2 never addressed the explosion from the first film, but there was a draft that mentioned it. In the August 5th, 1988 script, Janine explains that Ray and Egon are in the basement working on the new storage facility. Future drafts and the final film never showed this, and it is unclear if any improvements or changes were made. Other media would continue to explore this vital piece of equipment. In the real Ghostbusters, Egon created redundancies in the event of a power failure. The containment unit will- Easy, Ray. Everything is under control. I installed an emergency generator for just such a situation. And after Slimer accidentally hits the release lever, further security measures are installed. That's why Ray and Egan just installed this fail-safe protective device. It only responds to the fingerprints and voice prints of the immediate staff. This ensured only the boys in gray could let loose any spook stored in the containment unit. But after realizing one of them could be possessed, they removed the biometric requirement which also resulted in others opening the unit. While the enhanced facility definitely had a greater storage capacity, it wasn't infinite. After containing 486 ghosts, Egon remarks, And we're running out of space in the containment unit. Another change was the ability to enter the storage facility. Slimer does this almost exclusively, but occasionally a Ghostbuster would enter. Simple. I'll go inside the unit and find them. And in Extreme Ghostbusters, the design was largely unchanged from its animated predecessor. They even used a similar airlock when they needed to enter the containment unit. In Ghostbusters the video game, the design is clearly modeled after the animated counterparts. It likely functions similar to the first film, with some additions such as the interspatial gasket. I was fine-tuning the interspatial gasket this afternoon. I'll fix it. It is also referred to by a variety of names, including containment grid, the containment grid, containment grid, containment grid, containment grid, containment unit, containment unit, containment unit, containment unit, containment unit, containment unit, and containment facility. But how exactly does it work? Very simple, really. Like all of their equipment, the containment unit was custom-made, but functions based on pre-existing concepts. It operates on the same principles as a muon trap and works in conjunction with them. Since the trap only has a limited battery, an indefinite capture can only happen with a reliable supply of energy. To transfer a ghost trap, first... Open, unlock the system. This is done by pulling the containment chute lock out to the right and then rotating it up. Insert the trap. The trap canister connects to the containment unit's power supply. This process maintains the internal electromagnets of the canister and prevents the entity from escaping during transfer. A successful connection is indicated by the system engaged light. Release. With the canister connected to an external power source, the trap tray can be disconnected by pressing the canister release. Close. Lock the system. The containment chute lock is rotated down and pressed into the left. Set your entry grid. The containment unit has three sections. The panel, the antechamber, and the main chamber. The panel is what the trap canister is placed into. The antechamber acts as an airlock, and the main chamber is where the entities are properly stored. The main chamber contains a massive penning trap, as well as a grid of diode lasers to prevent escape. Hence why it is a high voltage laser containment system. Lasers can be effective at eliminating class one manifestations, but also weaken and deter stronger ectoplasmic entities. 
This is because the laser beams excite the electrons, causing the negatively charged ions to lose their valence electron and break the pKe bonds. By pressing the entry grid input, this activates as a second laser grid at the entry point of the antechamber. Neutronize your field. Two negative electromagnets act as contingency deterrents in case an entity were to escape the main chamber and get through its laser grid. When a trap transfer is occurring, these electromagnets have their polarity neutralized. The internal electromagnets of the trap canister are switched to a negative polarity, repelling the ectoplasmic manifestation through the entry grid into the antechamber. Finally, by pulling the release lever, the antechamber's electromagnets are switched on, repelling the manifestation through a second laser grid and into the main chamber. The successful containment light will illuminate when the antechamber is clear. Ghost is incarcerated here in our custom-made storage facility. The real Ghostbusters also named several parts which may have been added during its renovation. Transstator. Check. Field generator. Check. Ionization decay meter. Check. Plasmatic refractor. Anti-ectoplasm destruct mechanism. Bipolar adjuster. Check, check, and <sighs> check. But what do you think? Is our science solid, or are there some cracks in our design? If you liked this video and think we deserve it, Light is green, crap is clean. Please subscribe. We just released our first pieces of official merchandise. Check out the link in the description to see what's available. Select Patreon tiers, get 5 to 10% off. Woo! As always, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. And I'm Heidi with Channeling Spirits. Thanks for watching. <laughs>